is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. So let me ask you something. What <laughs> restaurants have you eaten at in Hialeah? Oof. So many, man. Um, I'm trying to think of the – I just ate there. Any I want staples? To say, God, what's the name? It's closer to Opalaka. Even, it's like on the outskirts of Hialeah. It's a Latin place. I just ate there the other day with my friends, and I hadn't eaten there in a few years. And I was like, wow, the food here is so good. It's like a, a Cuban place, and I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head for some reason now that you put me on the spot. Obviously, there's La Carreta that you know is, right. is a staple. Uh -huh. Off of 16th yeah. by uh, behind Westline Mall. Yes, but the other place, God, why I, I can't remember now. And I, now you're making me look it up, brother. I got to look this up now because it's probably the day. I, I, you know, yeah. every Thursday I'm at Hialeah Park, right? Yeah, I went to Hialeah High, so right. and I lived in Hialeah for several years. Mm -hmm. And I so said I, by the way, three years I lived in Hialeah. And so I go to my wife. You know, you've never eaten at Chico's. Chico's, okay. And Chico's is off of uh, 12th, mm -hmm. and it's like on 44th or something because it's before 49th Street. Right. You know, Gus Machado is there on that corner. Well, then yep. you go down, and, and Chico's restaurant has been there. It's It opened in 1980. Oh, okay, wow. So 44 years. Yeah, because mm -hmm. I, I go to her. I, I asked the, the, the waitress, I go, 81 did it open? She go, and she went and looked, and, oh, no, 80. And so I was off by a year. Because I remember going when it first opened and all that, and and I I went there, and the last time I went there was like maybe 1989. Okay. And, and so yesterday I went with the wife to have una palomilla and moro and and some oh, yeah. and brother, it was it was delicious. Yes. It was fantastic, and I was like, <laughs> wow, my wife loved it too. She also had you know this uh, she had rice and beans. I had moro. And so, you know, we tried it and it was like, I hadn't eaten at that restaurant in 30 some years, bro. And, yeah. And it was, uh, it was still good, bro. It was still good. That was pretty cool. I remember the name now. I just looked it up. Molinas. Ranch. Oh, Molinas. Yes. 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 Awesome yes. steaks. Unbelievably good food. Yeah. So. San Rusi is another one. Yeah. There's, yeah. you know, there's different, uh, different restaurants that are, actually still there some of them are still there you know what i mean yeah so and they got the old school cuban waiters who you know they bring you the the, the bread right away with the water yeah. within seconds and you're you know yeah you're off and running <laughs> yeah, dude, yeah i had the garlic bread right away there uh, at chico's yeah so so if anybody knows about chico's i just want you to know the food is still fantastic there bro still fantastic had an excellent meal i mean it's like i left i i drove home going uh, well, actually, the wife drove home, uh, but I, I'm going home and I'm like, damn, that meal. That was one of the better follow me as I've had in a while, you know, and it was like, yeah, that was uh, that was good. That was good. That was good. All right. So what's uh, what's the latest in the recruiting cycle for the boys? Well, I mean, look, they're up to five commitments. There's going to be a kid who's announcing this weekend, uh, Tarvos Alford, who's a top 100 linebacker from Vero Beach High School. Miami was in it for him for a long time. I think at one point they were the favorite, but it looks like he's going to pick Ohio State when he announces uh, tomorrow. But they got a ton of kids that they're after, man. Like, and, and like I told you last week, oh, this is sort of the silly season of recruiting uh, where, where kids do these commitments and then they go and they take official visits anyway in the summer and so to me you know the way the recruiting cycle has changed the ncaa has changed things quite a bit uh where now it's early december where guys are going to be signing uh versus before it was the third wednesday in december that takes away a lot of the late visits so miami's strategy when it comes to recruiting has to change a little bit they got to put more of an emphasis on in season visits and getting guys to come during the middle of the football season so that they get the last word in. But, uh, you know, right now there's a lot of guys that they're after. There's a bunch of top 100 recruits that they're that they're in on. Big time receivers, big time linebackers, you know, defensive. It's a typical Mario uh, <laughs> recruiting effort. DJ Pickett, who's the number one player in the state cornerback, is supposed to be here this weekend. So, you know, they're going to have people in and out uh, on a, for unofficial visits. But the reality is the nitty gritty is the summertime. June, you know, the end of May, beginning of June. 
Uh, that's the time that's most important because that's really, I think, when the elite kids now pick the school that they're really going to sign with and they start thinking, okay, those NIL checks are coming in, you know, th that those type of things start to happen, oh, and, and that's when those commitments become real. What are you hearing about Cam Ward, bro? How's he, uh, how's he uh, ingratiating himself? How's he fitting in? How's he trying to lead those kind of things. What what do you hear about the it factor and that kind of stuff? Because, you know, King came in and immediately, you know, started to kind of put his imprint on, on everything and, and, and people gravitated to him also automatically. So what are you hearing about Cam Ward in that sense? Yeah, I think, you know, look, he's, he's definitely won his teammates over, you know, um, uh, we talked about this on previous shows. He, he took a bunch of guys, a bunch right. of the offensive linemen, all 18 of them out to, uh, to go eat at, at one of the local steakhouses and spent thousands, right. Feeding, feeding his guys. All you hear from Mario over and over again, whenever Mario talks to the media is, uh, you know, this guy is an alpha male. He's, he's the guy who's not going to be afraid to say something in the huddle, which is different than Tyler Van Dyke was Tyler Van Dyke. You know, not all quarterbacks are built the same. Oh, some guys let their play do the talking. Other guys get in the huddle like Dan Marino used to do and and scream at guys, right? And guys, he's, he's like, you better catch this ball, right? I'm throwing, I'm going to you on this next play. You better make the catch. Cam Ward is the kind of guy who I think can back it up, right, with his play, with the fact that he can make plays with his legs, that he can escape the pocket. Even when, when other guys don't do their job, he will go above and beyond to extend the play. So I think he's got the respect of his teammates. Obviously, you can't really prove anything to them until the games start. But I think right now uh, he's won them over. He's won the coaching staff over, certainly. And I think, um, you know, it, it's, it looks like it's going to lead to good things. I had a long conversation uh, yesterday uh, with Malik Rozier, who, of course, is the only quarterback in the last 20 years to lead Miami Hurricanes to a 10-win season, right. by the way. Uh, and, and Malik has been out to several practices. And, you know, he told me, I, I asked him, I said, what's most impressive about Cam? Um, and he says the fact that he is he doesn't feel the heat at all. He he never, you know, anytime a defensive lineman comes in or there's blitz from a certain side, he sidesteps it with such ease and he makes it look so easy, right? The way he just sort of evades pressure that it it, it he looks calm and in control of the offense. It, it, it's not going to be anything here where uh, he's going to make mistakes because he's being rushed. He just, he knows what he's doing. And, and, and that's what Miami paid for ultimately. That's why they paid him over a million dollars to come here and play quarterback. Okay. Now part two might be an unfair question to ask you because things have to develop. Right. But is the plan Williams as the backup quarterback? Because, okay, you're going to run a certain kind of offense with Cam because you're running off his athleticism. So, right. so is your backup going to be somebody that has the same kind of skill set, or is your backup going to be a pure pocket passer that then you're going to have to kind of change the offense if, you know, God forbid there's an injury to Cam? So, right. what is that approach as that number two quarterback? It's a good question. I'll say this Emory Williams is going to redshirt this year. I, don't think he's going to play whatsoever. I think, he, you know, the fact that he didn't get a red shirt last year because Miami needed him because of what happened to Tyler Van Dyke with his struggles. He didn't get the red shirt last year. I think every intention this year is to make sure that he red shirts. So the two other backups would be Jakari Brown and Reese Poffenbarger. Both of them are much more mobile quarterbacks right. than Emory Williams. Right. So in terms of having to change the offense, I don't think there's going to be much in the way of, uh, of the way it changes, except that Cam Ward clearly is on a different level. Better skill. Compared to, Better yes, skill. Yes. Right. His skills are, are you know, much more refined than the two guys that would be competing to be his backup. So he, he, what he's trying to tell you, folks, is that Cam's accurate. Jakari's not. OK, that's just good. It's just trying. Well, that's all he's trying to say. That's all it is, you know. So yeah. yeah. Well, I, I I'll say this. I think you know Reese Poffenbarger has come in the kid that came in from Albany, and and the coaching staff has said nothing but great things about him. And you know, you watch him play. I think he's a very solid backup quarterback. I think if if Miami had to turn to uh, Reese Poffenbarger and say, "Hey, uh, we need you to start the next three games because Cam Ward has a sprained ankle." I don't think Miami would lose all three games. I don't think, you know, I don't know that Miami would necessarily win all three games, 
but I think they could certainly have a chance to win all three games. He's that kind of a guy who is experienced. He's put up decent numbers, and he looks like he's 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 a good fit for the offense. He's just not as good as Cam Ward, not even on the same level. Yeah, that's why I asked because the skill sets are different, and you know we've seen that many times, pro college. Yeah, that, you know you you'd like to kind of have the same skill set following the next guy. Uh, but if you don't, and that, that's where I ask because Williams to me looks like the best, second best quarterback after Cam. Again, right. I don't know much about Poffenberger. I haven't seen much. I've seen enough of Jakari to kind of, you know, accuracy for me is something that if you don't have it, I don't think you're ever really going to get it, to be quite honest. That's just kind of the way it goes, uh, the way I see it. But anyway, that's why I asked that because I, I, I kind of find that intriguing because. Right. Williams is your best talent, I think, as your number two quarterback. But I understand Cam's here for a short time. Let's try to extend Williams' career. And that poor kid, you know, he sacrificed last year, man. I mean, yep. your heart goes out to him for, for last year. Yeah, and, and I'll say this for, for Emery. I think, you know, he's he was certainly a guy that going into this going into his freshman year last year you wanted to redshirt you didn't want to have to play him at all you 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 know in a perfect world Tyler Van Dyke takes every snap and he, and he's playing at a high level and you know he gets to come into this season and compete for a starting job but he was basically forced to be the backup quarterback uh because Jakari Brown was essentially just you know uh being redshirted he chose to be redshirted so um it it's it is what it is i, I think you know i I would be shocked if Cam Ward gets injured this year because he is going to be playing with a much better offensive line than he had at Washington State. He's got really, really good receivers. Uh, I, I think this this could potentially be a huge year for him where he puts up huge numbers and and uh, Miami um, has the kind of season I think it really needs in year three under Mario Cristobal. All right, what are you working on at The Athletic, my friend? Well, those those all state recruiting teams that I've been working on forever, it feels like, uh, are finally going to start coming out next week. We'll have Florida and Georgia, the, those two teams, uh, you know, the, the best recruits to come out of those states since uh, in the modern recruiting era since 2002. I'll have uh, a University of Miami story, sort of a notebook with thoughts from people who have actually been out to practice and watched it, former players and coaches and people who uh, get to watch everything out there to get their opinions and thoughts. So there'll be a couple stories finally coming out. I'll tell you, oh, the athletics, like, listen, man, everybody's into the NCAA tournament right now. There's not much going on with uh, football. He says, unless there's really some important news, let's just let the bas let the basketball hype, yeah. uh, the, the gamblers enjoy their uh, their uh, NCAA basketball time. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I I don't <laughs> like. For yeah, it's like people, hey, uh, you know, the, to start forcing stories and, yep. and just to stir shit up. I don't. I don't need to do that shit. Bro. There's really nothing going on, brother. There's really yeah. nothing. When you go out to those game, those practices, there's so many guys out. You know, there's really the I competition is 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 just the guys trying to show the coaches, hey, I might be able to be used this coming fall. That's all it is. That's all that's going wanna, on. Yeah, it's like it's like I don't like to you know like some guy. Hey, to, you think Tua will hold out? I go, bro, that's forced content, bro. Like, come on, bro. You know Tua's not gonna hold out. <laughs> Why am I gonna just start doing that kind of stuff? I'm not doing yeah. that. Bro. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not just gonna create content to just create content. And I get it. Some of some people have to do it in order because their bosses require it. You have to do right. it sometimes. You know, right? It sucks, but it's kind of part of it. But you know, sometimes we just have to be honest, bro. There isn't really much going on. What do you want me to tell you? You know, right? Just, right. You know what I mean? And and even that, I thought we came up with some interesting topics here just to, you know, on the case. No, listen, we could talk about stuff, but writing stories, to me, it's a different medium. It's a, right. We're having a conversation. When, when we got to sit here and write stuff, there's no reason to force it. And that's what I appreciate working at The Athletic for. It's, hey, you, you don't, don't force a story. You know, don't just put something out because you right. feel obligated. Write something that's worthwhile. Write something that's exactly. interesting and different. And, and so that's what we try to do. Yeah, no, especially you. One of the things I love about your work is you do a lot of profile pieces. Mm -hmm. So a lot of stuff, a lot of, you know, uh, uh, investigative or a lot of stat stuff, a lot of, you know, that, to me, that's that's what the offseason is about. You know, yeah. instead of just trying to create some kind of controversy where there isn't a controversy and it's like that's you're just trying to force views and hits. And eh, yeah, that just. Yeah, you know, that's what I love about the athletic. We don't do that. Yeah, clickbait. Like, yeah, yeah. There's no, no need for that. All right, follow him on Twitter at Manny underscore Navarro. Catch his work there. No clickbait. 
at The Athletic, getting it done, and subscribe, as always. Manny, have a great weekend, my brother. We'll catch up on Tuesday. Good talking to you. Take care. Thank you, sir. Caneswear. Go visit Brett and all the great people at Caneswear, man. Caneswear.com. Use our code BIG010. You will get 10% off. And online, by the way, wherever you're at, you can get free shipping when you order over $99. They got anything and everything practically with a Canes logo on it. Dolphins, Marlins, Panthers, Heat Gear, Inter Miami. Get a messy shirt, man. Come on. Let's go. Check it out at Caneswear.com.